together, the origin of life and the change in life when it's already around explain the unity and diversity that you see in life. There is so much variety in life and that variety exists because life is constantly changing and adapting to different environments. But also because all life adapts from previous existing life, that means that all life is tied together and that we share common ancestry with all other living things which exist in the world. You know, so in a way, we all share things, but in a way, we're also different from each other. And that means that life has both unity and diversity, and all of it is explained by the theory of evolution. We have unity because we share common ancestry. We have diversity because we adapt differently to the environment across many generations. And within this concept comes the idea of categorizing life, and we categorize life in three major domains. Two of those domains are the things that don't have uh, those internal organelles. We call them the bacteria, remember? But there are ancient bacteria and then the, the modern bacteria called eubacteria. And those are the two largest domains of life. Most of the life forms are microscopic organisms, which are either the ancient type, which lives in hostile environments, or the new types of bacteria that live, like the ones that cause diseases, that live inside animals, that live inside all surfaces and things like that. But... You also have the eukaryotic things that uh, have internal organelles. And that is exceptionally separated in four kingdoms. The protista kingdom, which are unicellular organisms. The fungus kingdom, which are multicellular eukaryotic organisms, which are heterotrophs and must uh, digest their food outside their bodies and then ingest the nutrients. There's animals, which are also multicellular, also uh, heterotrophs, but they ingest their food and digest inside their own bodies. And then you have the plantae, which are the plants, which are also multicellular, but they are autotrophic and they make their own food. And protista actually have versions of each one of them. And the idea is that the animal, plant, and fungi kingdom came from branches off the protist kingdom. All of this is very complicated, and you don't need to know that by right now. What you do need to know, though, is that there are three main domains of life, and you will learn more about it that, though, as we hit evolution. But for now, know that there is archaea, and eubacteria. Archaea means the ancient kingdom, the ancient domain of life of, and the, that's closer to the original and lives in hospital environments. Bacteria is the new kind of bacteria that evolved after and then you have eukaryotic cells which have those internal organelles and those eukaryotic cells are divided into four groups plants, animals, fungus and protists and the protists are all unicellular like the bacteria but they have internal organelles. And we'll learn more about that when we do taxonomy very soon in this uh, first part of the year as well. Now, those kingdoms of the eukaryotic domains can be separated into smaller groups tax in taxonomy, which we'll learn about too when we do this uh, Linnaean taxonomy. And those are the groups that you see on the screen there. The species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, and domain. Each group is a little more specific, including a more specific type of animal until you get to the species, which is the unique type that can actually interbreed with each other. Now, this is just a, a major look at look at the tree of life, but you can also split this tree of life and, and, and see the more the detail of all the ramifications that exist. By the way, early in the tree of life, there's evidence that there was a transference of, of DNA material between these early three domains. And we talk more about that in taxonomy. The origins of life are a little convoluted, as you see here in this picture. There's a lot of uh, mess at the early history of life that has to be cleared up. Still, here you see a little more convoluted version of the tree of life that includes all the living branches that, uh, of the tree of life. But every branch that you see here are only the branches that survive. There's a lot more stuff out there that is not included here because they already went extinct. So for every branch there's here, there's a million branches that's not th that are not here. And these are only including the major types of life. Uh, for each of these branches splits further into smaller and smaller branches, which is why you need all these levels of classification that you see on this screen over there. Now, throughout life, one interesting thing that's also explained by evolution is the idea that form fits function. For example, you see that the wings of several different types of things that fly, uh, although they were not necessarily sharing common ancestors that had wings, all of these, these species here developed wings. The, the bat, the, the uh, insect, a bird, and a dinosaur, so a reptile. As you see here, all of these different versions of, of wings are all trying to fulfill the same function. And because of that, they have similar structure. Likewise, even at the cellular level, 
prokaryotic eukaryotic cells, which have different uh, structures, have similar structures if they have similar functions. Like the cell membrane is similar on both, both of them. And look at the legs of both birds and dinosaurs, built for the same purpose and therefore have the same structure. In evolution, you can understand the way that life is shaped to, for, by the task that life had to accomplish. And it's actually funny that sometimes life uses a shape that's already around in a new adapted way to change it. For example, the same bones that you see in the, in the, in the hands of humans are used in whales, for example, very similar bones, but as flippers. So that's a change in the function. By the way, the human hands did not evolve for grasping the way we use it. We were originally uh, evolved from organisms that walked in four limbs. So this was originally for walking, but evolved, changed from that into a different function. So life adapts the structure for different functions. But everything that is in life can be explained either by the function that it currently does or by the function that the ancestor used it for. So that's why evolution is another good way to explain the way that life works. The eye seems like a very complex thing to have evolved by itself. But it does fulfill a function. And by understanding its function, you can understand how it evolved. Especially if you understand that this does not evolve out of nowhere, but it evolved in successive steps where things that were already there got adapted and improved to match the, the necessity of the environment across generations through the process of natural selection. We'll talk about this in more detail later in the year. I'm just introducing the idea of evolution here for you guys. All right. Another thing that comes from this idea of evolution is that all life is related. That there are relationships among other things in life. That you do share something in common with things like sea stars and plants. And that uh, everything there is on earth, if you have a similar function, you're probably going to have a similar structure. If you have a similar ancestor, you're probably going to share a similar structure. All of these things are also explained by evolution. The relationship that exists between animals, for example, the fact that uh, uh, bees and flowers have a mutualistic relationship when they both need each other to survive explained by evolution. So along with the fact that forms and functions are explained by evolution, relationships can also be explained by evolution. And by the way, when you mean form and function, you can also talk about behaviors. Everything that things do in life can also be explained by the function that they do. And their function is tied in to the reason why they need to survive and therefore to evolution. This means that the evolution is the ultimate theory of biology that explains everything in biology. It explains why things happen. It explains why certain shapes exist. It explains why, how the animals relate to each other, both in terms of like having similar features and also in the way they act in relationship to each other. It even explains death. Because if you think about it, why do we die? We die so that we can evolve. Because if we never died, if you never grew old, if you never grew weaker and it ultimately died, you would continue to improve throughout life and learn more and more, which means you would most likely have a tendency to outcompete your offspring. That means that would make no sense for you to reproduce because you would outcompete your offspring. So growing older has to do with increasing the chances of your offspring to survive. Why would you want that? You would want that because the environment is constantly changing. And if the environment is changing and we, life doesn't change, Life goes extinct. So there needs to be a process to change life. And that means, requires reproduction because, remember, natural selection has everything to do with reproductive success. So if you don't reproduce and have the differences in reproductive success, you don't evolve. But then you can't adapt across generations to changes in the environment. And that means you go extinct. So the only way for life to preserve itself is to make sure that we grew old to enhance the chances of our offspring to survive as we leave room for them to take our place. Otherwise, we would may, might outcompete them. So you see how even that is explained through evolution. So evolution explains everything in biology. And that's why it's the best theory to, to talk about biology because it explains everything in biology.